So hi, Micro Punter here. Well, I'm pretty excited today because I want to share with you some of the results of a few experiments that I've done over the last couple of days. I've been experimenting with a contrast enhancing techniques and specifically with a technique called oblique illumination. And uh, this uh, allows you to look at specimens that are otherwise pretty low in contrast and to look very interesting and striking because it looks they start to look three-dimensionally and I'm just gonna show you a couple of pictures now what um, I've been able to achieve the first uh, picture is uh, shows a few algae now this one is just regular bright field just like um, under any ordinary microscope and the image looks pretty flat I mean that's what we expect but look under oblique illumination the features really start to stand out and the whole algae starts to look three-dimensionally as if it were to and it actually casts a shadow um, and this gives it a very yeah very very stereoscopic impression and I've uh, also tried this with a second specimen here again without oblique illumination it's very flat the image as we normally would expect it and then with oblique illumination look at this uh, doesn't it look much nicer and uh, what I have done is is uh, I have essentially um, placed filters that look like this um, in my filter holder of my microscope. Many microscopes I have a filter holder beneath the condenser and uh, I'm just uh, have got one here detached. Uh, this is a condenser. For those of you who do not know so much about microscopes yet, uh, this one is uh, found beneath the stage. It's mounted uh, beneath the stage here. And uh, there is a filter holder in here. Um, usually there is already a blue filter somewhere. LED microscopes usually don't have a blue filter that is simply to give uh, the light a more neutral um, color. But uh, that is not, the blueness is not the important thing here. What we need is, is we need uh, filters or disks usually made of cardboard. I have 3D printed mine, but probably you're gonna use cardboard. And uh, this goes into the filter holder. And uh, basically what happens is, is that uh, it blocks the light uh, from one side um, and allows light to go from the other side. So this means the light strikes the object from the side. Um, and uh, this kind of causes uh, the object to appear three-dimensionally because it's gonna cast a shadow, so to say. And what I've been doing is uh, I've been experimenting with uh, various sizes and shapes and uh, different uh, cutouts and people over the years I would almost say over the century. They have tried all sorts of different shapes um, and uh, what I have uh, now done is the following. I basically made a whole set of filters with different sized cutouts and I experimented around. Sometimes I even drilled a hole here in the middle. Uh, a very small one um, did not work very well. Um, but I'm going to show you now one of the things where I was a little bit successful, as a matter of fact, quite successful. Um, a few things um, about how this um, actually works. Um, it's like this that um, what happens is, is that uh, the light that uh, strikes the object from the side and the light that is able to go directly through the object they interfere with each other and they cause uh, those shadows to appear and maybe you already know something about dark field um, dark field uh, uses a filter that uh, or a patch stop where it completely blocks out the light in the center and only allows light to pass through from the side and in open Leak illumination. What uh, what you do is, is you basically uh, simply cover uh, the other parts here here as well. Now, um, if you do not have a filter like this and if you do not want to make one out of cardboard i will actually show you a much simpler way how you can quickly try it out at home because all you need believe it or not is i'm gonna take my condenser again all you need is is a sheet of paper <laughs> it's really that easy and what you do is the following and um, you're just going to take the sheet of paper and while looking through the microscope you just slide it okay across the opening of the condenser and then you're gonna find the place where um, you have a 3d effect okay um, and uh, then what you can do is, is use, use some use some uh, sticky tape and you can fix uh, the uh, the paper then to the uh, to the filter holder or to the condenser on the bottom but the thing is when you slide the uh, sheet of paper across what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a shadow of course uh, approaching and uh, the place uh, where the shadow um, covers uh, the the image um, it's not gonna be a very sharp shadow but it's gonna be fuzzy and this fuzzy area this because out of focus this is the place where you have this uh, 3d effect and what i found is, is 
I found that it works uh, best not in low magnification, but actually uh, with a, a 10 times or 40 times magnifying objective. I'm also using the 20 times quite often. Um, so for the very low magnifications, it does not work because you do not see the shadows quite well. Um, and uh, for the higher magnifications, it actually works uh, extremely well. There is, however, one important disadvantage, and that is, is that this position is extremely sensitive. So I've made a whole bunch of filters, but I discovered that uh, even a very very small difference in size of the cutout can have already a very dramatic effect so um, in, actually this is an inconvenient because when I change the magnification in the microscope I always have to change the filter as well um, and this is very inconvenient um, if you now have a, a microscope a filter holder that is not one that you simply pop on like like this here but many microscopes have a filter holder which is a swing out type okay so it's uh, connected on one place and then you can rotate it out and uh, these uh, filter holders actually have a significant advantage because what you can do is, is you simply uh, can rotate the filter just as much as a uh, filter holder just as much as you need it to cover up the right amount so um, and you can make very very fine adjustments this way not possible in my case uh, because it's not a rotating uh, one um, so I had to actually design uh, myself uh, a system that allows uh, me this fine adjustment okay and I'm just want to show this to you as well so I have to take this out here okay I've got it here and uh, what I've, I've 3d printed this again and what I've done is the following and this uh, down here this is what I um, attached uh, simply clamps uh, over the filter holder and what I can do now is, is I can simply move this in and out here and you can see that basically by moving it back and forth, I can cover a different um, amount um, of, uh, yeah, of the aperture here. And uh, therefore it gives me a very, very precise possibility to adjust, uh, um, uh, to adjust the position and therefore I can get the optimum effect. So um, there are a variety of ways how you, what you can do. And over the years, people have been experimenting around with a lot of different, uh, with a lot of different uh, cutouts and, and, and shapes. And, and yeah, um, even uh, some people even started to color some of them. So you have a mix between oblique illumination and Reinberg. Um, there, there are almost endless possibilities. So now I want to talk a little bit about a similar tech, uh, not a similar technique, one that gives you a similar um, result and or supposedly similar result and this uh, technique is called DIC differential interference contrast and uh, the DIC and oblique illumination have one thing in common and the thing that they have in common is, is that both of them um, allow you to get get this 3D impression this uh, somewhat yeah the sense of depth uh, because both of them st uh, seem to cast shadows that is the similarity. There is, however, one huge difference between those two methods. The difference is, is that this oblique illumination is practically free of charge. It costs nothing to make these filters. And DIC is extremely expensive, extremely expensive. As a matter of fact, uh, you cannot even easily convert a microscope to DIC because uh, you need a, 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 not only a special DIC condenser, but also you need to have a, a place up here where you can insert prisms and so on. And it's extremely, um, yeah, not only the equipment itself the, um, is expensive, but you also need a special microscope that is able to actually be converted to DIC and uh, here we have basically a similar effect uh, which is basically free of charge um, and uh, the disadvantage of, uh, of oblique illumination is, is that of course the quality is not quite as high um, as DIC and uh, you also lose a lot of light because you're covering a large part uh, um, of the aperture as well and this can mean that uh, yeah, the image is getting dark, okay? Um, so you have to um, actually experiment around a little bit. And there are some people who are um, also experimenting around by maybe not making it completely black, but maybe by making it a little bit uh, like paper to allow a little bit of light to go through. So there are different ways how you can modify the system and how you can try out different variations of the system. As I mentioned, the possibilities are nearly endless uh, concerning this. Towards uh, the late uh, 19th uh, century, Olip oblique illumination was quite popular because at that time the microscope objectives uh, were not good enough yet so they could not resolve very fine details and therefore oblique illumination was used uh, to make uh, the structures more visible. Um, at that time even some microscope manufacturers uh, designed uh, special oblique illumination condensers 
but nowadays uh, I would say that uh, most people who are interested in this technique would probably make uh, their own filters and patch stops because this gives a lot of uh, possibilities uh, for experimentation as well. So now let's do the following. Now let's compare uh, this oblique illumination to phase contrast because I do have a phase contrast microscope and uh, phase contrast also allows you to see specimens that are low in contrast in much better. Um, and uh, what I'm going to do now is let's compare those two phase contrast or oblique illumination because phase contrast is also a little bit expensive, not quite as expensive as DIC, uh, but still. Um, and I paid for my uh, upgrade, phase contrast upgrade, I paid. Um, yeah. I bought it second hand but I paid uh, several hundred euros uh, to actually get the upgrade done um, and uh, this here basically costs nothing so let's uh, let's uh, have a little comparison here so this here is uh, phase contrast and uh, paramecia and other ciliates are floating around happily and uh, when you switch uh, over to uh, oblique illumination then you see that the effect is also pretty good actually. So the question is, is, is it worth it to invest so much money um, in a phase contrast uh, equipment if you can also get a very good contrast uh, using a piece of paper basically. So this uh, rod differ here is again um, in a bright field. It's pretty transparent and we can see the dark uh, black spots. It seem to be air bubbles or dust or dirt. And when we switch over to oblique illumination, everything looks a little bit more, yeah, I would say uh, cleaned up uh, and I would say also quite, uh, quite nice. And at the very end uh, of this video, I'm going to show you some more videos that I made using this technique. So um, also keep watching. If you don't know which specimens to look at, uh, because you don't have any water samples around, then I recommend that you simply look at your cheek cells. What you do is, this, I'm not going to do this now in front of you here in, on the camera, take your little finger and you scratch some of the cells off from the inside of your cheek and then you, I've got a slide here, and then you basically rub the cells here on a slide, uh, you distribute it, small drop of water, cover glass, and then try to look at your cheek cells um, in bright field um, and also then in oblique illumination. You're going to see that actually it looks so much nicer in oblique illumination you won't believe it. So it is a really a simple way that can in my view really greatly increase the joy of microscopy. I don't know it sounds kind of very grand if I say it like that but I think it's a very um, interesting and a very nice way to also get very nice pictures and especially water life looks so much nicer and more impressive using um, oblique illumination. I think that's enough for today. I wish you all the best. Please leave your comments. Please do subscribe if you liked it and uh, happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye bye.